I finished creating my wireframe geometry from my scans. I'm going to call these scans, even though I did planar sections and I turned on curves from scans. I'm just going to call these scans for now. So everything you see here that's kind of horizontal, if you will, looking here, we're all curves from scans. And if you look on my tree, you can eventually see them sitting here. And then I did some intersections between those scans and the respective axis, uh, the respective planes from my axis system. So I ended up with the points. You can see those here as extractions um, from intersections. You can do a variety of ways to get those points in there. But the reason why I did it this way is because I like for my points to be lined up. So notice how they're lined up that direction and they're lined up this direction. And if you tried to use an extremum point tool, you're just not going to get that. So that's why I did the intersection with an extraction. Now, I will tell you, and let me throw a porcupine analysis on this, these are terrible curves. Please, students, do not do curves like this. I'm not going to worry about the front curve here because that's just by its nature going to be as it is, even though down here is really bad. But let's look at the back. Look at all those points of inflection, lack of smoothness, etc., that you can get from that. That's, that's not too good. Uh, let's look at the side as well. And both sides are going to be different too, but just by the nature of the model, this isn't a perfect symmetry as it stands, at least. Terrible. And look at all those points of inflection. Shouldn't have that many. And then back here on this other side. Again, terrible. Should not have that many points. When you throw in that many points, you're going to end up with a lot of points of inflection and just a really poor curve, which is going to lead to a poor surface. It's hard to really eyeball that. Well, actually, it's not too bad to eyeball that. So what I want to do is I want to replace these. Um, now, as I replace these, i got to keep in mind that it's going to get away from my mesh a little bit, which is going to get away from my point cloud, which is going to get away from my original clay model that I did. But that's okay because this is design work, and there's nothing magical about my clay model at this stage of the game. I'm not trying to be super accurate with what I'm reverse engineering, so to speak. I'm just trying to get a clay model into Katia, and then I can finish my design work in Katia. So I'm going to hide, I should delete these probably, but I'm going to hide these guides. And I'm just, let's turn my mesh back on. I can get all the way to the top here. And I'm just going to be selective with the cross sections I use. So I think I'm going to not use this cross section, nor the points associated with it. Uh, yeah, uh, won't use that one either. Turned off the wrong thing. Let's hide that. I really don't need these. If I had more time, I could probably come in and evaluate these a little bit more. But in the end, actually, I'm only going to use the beginning and ending sections, which, by the way, I created with the free curves option, which, by the way, I created with the free edge option. I'm not sure I demoed that, but there is a tool for creating free edges. Uh, wireframe geometry from free edges, but I think I'm just going to go with that for now. And then I can manipulate tangent directions and tension to get it close. So um, I'm going to come back in. I want to create a new geometric set just to keep this organized. I'm going to call this guides. And let's start creating stuff. So I want to use the spline tool. And I'm just going to work my way through here. So this point, I know I want it to go straight vertical. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the Z direction. This point, I want to be straight vertical. So I'm going to select the Z direction. This point, I think they're all going to be vertical just by the nature of how I'm trying to model this. And there you go. Back down to Z. This one, almost forgot it there. 
then Z direction. And this one won't be the Z. Now, let's put a porcupine analysis on this and see what it looks like. Oh, <laughs> that's almost as bad as, as the other ones, but that's okay for now. Um, I can take, I, I can spend hours tweaking this, but you can tweak it a lot better if you don't put it through points and you're just using directions and tension values than you can if you're trying to do it another way. So I've got a little point of inflection here. Let's just see if I can get rid of it. And that's at point three, or at least play around with it just a bit, just to see what happens. Of course, you're going to have points of inflection, but yeah, so, but I want, to, I want that to be really as smooth as possible. And as you manipulate one, you're going to manipulate the other as well. So I'm going to, you're always going to have these point, little points of inflection, but I'm trying to minimize them as much as possible. The best way to get rid of them is to have less, a lesser number of points, but it is what it is right now. Um, that's not as good. So I'm not going to waste a lot of video time getting these perfect, but it's not going to be perfect. But I probably have one extra section for what I need here. Let me see if I can get rid of three. And because I did that, I need to... Point three, play around with its tension values a little bit. And probably go down to two and loosen it up just a tad. And like I said, just just keep keep working through it until you get what you're looking for. And while that's not really good, I'm gonna keep it for now. And now let's finish the other two sides. I'll finish that and come back on here in a moment. 